Welcome back. One of my most popular videos has been on replacing drum brake shoes. So I figure every time I do a job that involves uh, rear brake shoes, I am going to tape it and put it out there, even if there's some crossover between them. Today we are going to replace the rear brake shoes on a 2001 Honda Odyssey. There's a couple of these out there. They're just uh, worn out, starting to make a little bit of noise, and uh, I think somebody might have left the parking brake on and drove it, so there's some heat cracks in them and they need to go away. Now, we are going to replace them with brand new ones. Let's get started. I'm tired of talking. I don't even know how many comments I got about quote unquote not having jack stands under the car in the first video. There was a jack stand there, but I didn't think to shoot it. But today, we are going to jack the van up and put it on jack stand. Now I'm going to use this toe hook. Or, this actually is a jack point, I think, because I don't think you can use it as a toe hook. But I'm going to do both wheels at the same time here. I'm going to use an impact gun to get these lug nuts off, but if you do not have an impact gun, you need to break the lug nuts loose before you jack it up. Or else you're gonna be there all day. I've also been asked about this. Where do I put the jack stand? You can check your owner's manual, but uh, a lot of times there's lift points that go right along the pinch rail. So you can just put your gun in that happy place, let it down gently. Please note that I have let the jack stand down, but the jet floor jack is still placed underneath where I lifted the car. The reason for this is for me, it makes it easier when I'm done to already have the jack stand in place ready to go. But the weight is not on the jack, it's on the jack stands. Sure you can figure this part out. It's now time to remove the drum. Uh, I showed in my removing brake, drum, brake drums the easy way video that you can take these uh, 8x125 bolts and put them into these holes and run them down and it will pop the drum off of the hub. The other method that's commonly used, in fact probably more common than not, is to take a hammer and hit it between the studs. Now this this drum is really nice to me, it's actually going to come off uh, fairly easily I think. But before I take it off, something I didn't mention in my other video, you really don't want to breathe in brake dust if you can avoid it. Um, no, they're not using asbestos anymore but it's still, whenever you're talking about small particles of dust, it's not a good idea to breathe them in. So a good idea is to take, like, I've got my oil pan down underneath here so I don't make a mess on my garage floor. And I'm just going to work the drum off a little bit. Well, it's almost off, but not all the way. So there's enough space where I can get in behind it. Then I'm going to take my brake clean. I'm just going to go in and see all the dust coming out. You're going to clean it anyway and this will help cut down on that particulate matter that is inevitable when you're doing a job like this. There's a bunch of it down in there which I'm now going to rinse out with the brake clean. And I will say this, brake shoes take a really long time to wear out, sometimes more than 100,000 miles. So, you're not going to be doing brake shoes as often as you would other, other things. I'm starting to get some noise from these and uh, I'll show you why I think that's happening. See these heat cracks in these shoes? I think maybe at some point the parking brake was left on and compromised these shoes. They are kind of noisy. Um, that's, that's the reason why I'm replacing them. But I want to clean this brake drum out right now. I think if I would have started with more from the outside, I'd have less now. But the inside of the drum doesn't look bad at all. I'm not getting any pulsation back here. There's one of two things that you can do here. You can either machine the drums to create a new surface, or you can replace the drums. Or in this case, and believe it or not, Honda recommends, and here's the measurement on the outside of the drum here about the inside diameter. You actually use a measuring tool on the inside of this drum to see if it falls within this specification which as you can see the maximum diameter 
if it exceeds the specification, the drum should be replaced. But if you don't have any pulsations, I recommend not doing anything. Don't machine it, don't, don't do anything. Uh, in fact, that's what Honda says to do, and just renew the friction material. I'm now going to uh, clean the area with brake cleaner. At this stage, I like to check the wheel cylinders to see if there's any issue. This is the wheel cylinder. It's the hydraulic actuator for the brake shoes themselves. Uh, as you step on the brake pedal, what happens is fluid forces these pistons against the shoes in both directions against the inside of the drum, thus causing them to operate. I'll just take the screwdriver and go underneath this dust boot and pull it back and look inside. If I don't see any fluid coming out of here, the wheel cylinder is okay. I just check them just uh, as a measure whenever I'm doing rear brakes, just because you never know. And check both sides, of course, because there's two separate seals here. Next phase, we need to get uh, some stuff off of here. And you really don't need that many tools to do this with. I'm going to start by removing the spring for the parking brake lever. Quite simply, I'm just going to use a pair of side cutters here. And I'm, I'm just going to grab the spring and push up. It's not a very strong spring. Just grab it, push up, pull it out of there. And then unhook it from its lower hole there. Try to keep an eye on where these holes are. Maybe important later. There will be a test. One of the most confusing things about drum brakes is getting them put back together. So to help me remember where things go, I lay them out, all of my parts, on the floor in an area where I'm not going to walk and knock them around, uh, just in general. So I just pulled this off of the left side of the drum, so I'm putting it over here. We'll, we'll call this dividing line the, the hub. So I'm putting this here, going to remove the uh, parking brake lever and I'm going to put it right by that so that I know those two things are connected. Just a little trick that might help you. Next I'm going to remove the parking brake lever, which all I have to do is, <laughs> as you can see, just lift up. There's just this little peg sticking out of the shoe that it's, that it's resting on. So all I have to do is just take it off of that. I set that right next to my spring. Here's the spring that's going to make you curse. Um, and it's, it's the one that I'm going to remove next. But this, this spring has more tension than any other spring in this whole job. And it can be kind of difficult to get it unhooked here. They actually make special tools. Uh, I couldn't tell you who made this. It was given to me some time ago. But as you can see, it's broken. This used to have like a little hook on the end of it. And, this little th and down inside this little threaded hole. And what you did was, is you placed it on the, uh, you hooked it onto the spring itself, and then you just screwed this down until it made contact with the spring and it, and it held it fast so that you could remove it safely. Uh, you need to be careful with these springs because like I said, there's a lot of tension and this is probably going to be the most difficult part of the job. Uh, not only getting this off, but getting it back on. So what I've done since this tool is no longer functioning, I use a pair of really long pliers. Uh, you can also use those same side cutters, but to be honest, in a situation like this, the right tool makes all the difference. So if you can, find a proper tool, but eh, you know, maybe you're in a situation like me and you don't have it. Uh, I use these because they're really nice and long and I got a lot of leverage here. These, you don't have as much leverage, but these you definitely have plenty. So I'm going to be using, uh, yeah, and these are, these are made by Mac. There are lots of tools you can do this with. This is just one of them. The idea is I'm going to grab the spring about here, and I'm going to put the palm of my hand on the brake shoe, and then I'm going to pull with my fingers to get the leverage. So I'm squeezing with the pliers. I'm pushing with the, or pulling with my fingers with the palm of my hand on the shoes and I'm going to unhook it from here. So pinch, pull, and this would be a lot easier without this camera in the way. <laughs> now be careful because you don't want to compromise your wheel cylinder. If you do that, uh, you'll have to do some brake bleeding. And you know, if you're having a lot of trouble here, and you can't quite get to any of this stuff, 
There's just one nut holding this hub and bearing assembly on. You can just knock this top off, take this whole hub assembly off, and it's completely out of your way. It'll make things so much easier. Okay, gonna go with a different strategy. The biggest reason I'm having so much trouble here is this spring is under lots and lots of tension. So to help alleviate some of that tension, I'm just gonna spin the adjuster backwards. I'm gonna be readjusting the brakes anyway. You'll see how it's ramped, this adjuster. This is the way it normally goes, but to undo it, you just go with the ramp and turn it in the opposite direction. This will release some tension on that spring. And also when I put them back on, this will be relaxed like it is now. So that's taking a considerable amount of tension off that spring. Let's see if it's easier to get off now. Please note that I also have self-preservation in mind that I'm not trying to hold anything over here because if this spring lets go, um, it doesn't care what's in the way, including your hand. And looking at the way this spring is, I don't think I'm going to get it out of this side. I think I'm better off going over here. So, change of tactics. If it doesn't work on one side, try the other side. I'm just going to leave in all that effort that I made before. Just to show you that sometimes if you're not making any progress, try a different strategy. Now that that's over, I'm going to show you why this wasn't coming out because it had that on there. So when you go to take the spring out and you're working on an Odyssey, make sure you take off the short end and not the long one and back the adjuster off all the way when you do and that will relieve some tension. Now this is orientated over here. This part of the spring is always reserved for space so for the adjuster assembly. So if you wonder how this goes back on when you're all done, take a look at the adjuster assembly and see how it's how it's setting in there. So I'm going to set this over with my other parts now. You may not realize it but the job is pretty much over. Next you can just spread these apart just a little bit and you can take the adjuster assembly out. comes out just that easy. Once again, keep an eye out for, oh this one's nice, it doesn't have a staggered tooth back here, but if it did you want to make sure that it goes back in the correct direction, but once again, um, take a good look at it and set it over with your parts and the way it came off. These are hold down springs. Uh, these are actually fairly easy because they don't involve any tools uh, but sometimes I use that same set of pliers sometimes there's like a little tab that sticks out and I'll go in with these pliers and push there's a on the back of this there's a, a little tab I'm gonna show you that in a second there's a little tab and I put my finger on that tab so that when I push on this I'm not pushing this whole nail through the back I'm just depressing the spring but if, it, if there was a tab here, I would push in, grab it, and then twist it so that it could allow the hold down spring to come off. They also make special tools for that. But these, quite simply, all you need to do is push down and slide them back. And once you've got them back far enough, you can just peel them out of the way. Really simple. I remove my other spring the same way, just sort of push down, pull it back, and there it is. Last thing holding these in is this little spring right here, but you don't need to worry about fighting it because all you need to do is just take the shoe, pull it back, and angle it down. That's it. You can take the other shoe off while you're at it. And look at that. Naked. Alright. You see where that spring was hooked in? It's even on both sides. So it doesn't go in any particular direction. 
but you'll note that this shoe has a little peg that sticks up for the parking brake assembly. This will be important later when you go to reassemble because only two of the shoes will have this little peg sticking up. And if it doesn't, you'll have to transfer this roll pin from one to the other. Um, and the best way to do that, here, let's just talk about that right now. Here's the new shoe. You can see it's got a peg there. If it didn't have one, like I said, all you, all you would have to do is knock this out with a hammer, but lay them up side by side so that you put it back in in the same hole. That way you don't have to worry about it. And another trick that actually uh, Big Block Mustang had mentioned to me was so that you avoid getting any contaminants on the outside of the shoe as you were doing this job is maybe to take a piece of masking tape and put it on the outside of this uh, friction material so that as you're working you don't contaminate it with other brake dust and stuff like I did there. And it makes for a much cleaner, nicer, better brake job. I'm not going to do that here because, well, I'm lazy and it's my car. But it's just a little helpful tip for you. Got that last spring. And that way all your springs are laid out pretty much in the direction that they're going to go back on. And if you want to, just for reference, well, you can lay the shoes out too so you know how they're supposed to look. This is the parking brake assembly and this is the parking brake cable and if you ever needed to take this off just slide the spring back, take a pair of side cutters, slide the spring back like this and just take the uh, assembly right off there, it just hooks on and get it back on there, you just hook it and put it in there. Uh, you can also use like a uh, pair of vice grips or something. Try not to damage the cable though, uh, especially the coating on the outside. It is a steel cable. I'm glad to see these here because they weren't in the other video, I don't think. But these are these are easy. Watch this. Take these same side cutters and just sort of try to slide them up in between that clip to spread it a little bit. Take a pair of channel locks. Throw them on the floor. First, you have to scream an obscenity. All right, there, now you can see it. Just take uh, the channel locks, one on the nail head, one on the back of these, and just grab and push. See how easy that was? Take a screwdriver. It's all about leverage, people. Now, a little, little slot that you just made, take the screwdriver and just twist. I usually have much quicker success with this, but yeah. There we go. Now let's twist it off. You just pull this off. Save this. Don't lose it. And then the pin will come right out of the back there. And you are now free of brake shoes. Now it's time to prep the backing plate. As you can see, I also had a crack in this one. Now let's do a little prep work on our backing plate. Now, I don't know if you noticed that GM that I did last time if you've watched it, but you see how these really are nice and smooth, these bosses? It's because this backing plate is made out of some pretty decent metal. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna rough it up too much. Uh, normally what I'll do is I'll take some sandpaper and go along here, but you can see there really isn't, there's still paint on this backing plate. So I'm really just gonna clean it up like so. See there isn't even a groove worn in there. And if I can still see paint on the backing plate, I'm not gonna scuff it up with sandpaper. But normally that's what I would do, is I would rough it up. You see the difference there? There's just a little bit of paint gone where a brake shoe has been for the past 150,000 miles. You know, it probably hasn't been there that long, but it doesn't really need to be smoothed out. It doesn't. That's what you're looking to do. If there's a if there's a groove worn in here, like there is a little bit on this one, but if there's a big groove worn in here, that's what you're doing. You're you're basically smoothing out that groove so that the shoe, which rides against here, and moves back and forth, so it can do so freely. That's that's the whole point of this. 
because it's these little areas here that make contact, these three areas, that allow the shoe to move. Now most of the movement's gonna be at the top, but it, it will move ever so slightly at the bottom. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of anti-seize, just a little bit, and every place where the shoe is gonna ride, it's gonna put a little bit where the shoe is going to make contact. This will help reduce noise and also ensure that my brake shoes are going to move like they should. Two different types of brake uh, assemblies. There is uh, what's referred to as a servo and what's referred to as a non-servo. Servo meaning twisting. Most Asian vehicles are non-servo style and they therefore use their parking brake adjustment via the parking brake. So the activation of the parking brake actually solicits the adjustment of the, of the brake shoes themselves. Uh, whereas the servo type needs to twist, so normally that will self-adjust as you back up. You tell the difference between the two types of shoes by the, uh, um, by the friction material. One shoe, normally the front shoe, will have less friction material than the back as a result. But as you can see, and just to be sure, grab three at least. Grab three different brake shoes, line them all up next to each other. And if you see that they all have the same amount of friction material on them, you know that this is a non-servo brakes type setup and you can therefore um, not have to worry about short shoe, long shoe. So this, this actually makes your life a little bit easier. But now just take a brake shoe, slip the pin through it like so, grab your little horseshoe, stick it back on there. All right. No excuses. There. That's clipped in. I'll spin that around for you. Take your dikes or side cutters or whatever you want to call them and just pinch those ends together so that it doesn't fall off. And if you need a little help from your finger, I'll hold it in place and do it. Pinch those together. I used to lubricate this stuff, but then I realized too much lubrication back here with all this brake dust is just going to be a place for that to collect. Now you want to make sure everything's clean and can move freely. But I, I would try to stay away from too much lubricant. There we go. There, it's all pinched together now. I would try to stay away from too much lubricant because what that will do, like I said, is attract the dust. That moves nicely. Now let's begin our reassembly. I'm just going to take, go along the back here and push this pin so it sticks up like this. Take the shoe, put that in there, hook it in the bottom. Now my pin's all up there. I'm going to grab my clip and I don't believe there's any particular way this is supposed to go in but if you want to put it back exactly you'll notice that there's a little bit of rust on that one side but not on the other. So you can just sort of pinch it, pinch it like this, hook it up under and push at the same time. Oops. That way your shoe's all held in place. Now I'm going to grab my lower spring and hook that in down under here. Grab my other shoe and hook that in as well. And then I'm going to bring it up and just through leverage put it back where my other one was. And that way my spring is underneath this tab. It's where it needs to be. And I didn't have to expend too much effort to get it there. I used leverage. Now, same on this one. I want to make sure that my little pin comes back through there. You must always throw parts on the ground periodically just to remind yourself working on cars is 
an exercise in patience. And you should see it as such, because it's not always going to go the way you plan. I can attest to that. Nice. I'm going to grab my adjusting rod next, and since I know it's all the way backed off, since it was spinning freely, um, it seems to have this little spring in here for a reason. Um, going to say that that's going to face towards the back because I don't recall it facing out towards the front. Maybe I'll slip it this way first because that slot is much longer. Slip it in this way first. Push the shoe back. There's no spring on it yet. Get it pretty much where it needs to be and you see how the wheel cylinder is pushing in a little bit? If you do that now, the spring will go on better because if this is extended it will the the idea of that spring is so that it that it's the return spring it's supposed to keep this compressed so if you compress this all not only will you see that you've got this in there correctly but it will also make it easier to get your big spring on which is the challenge so now you got your big spring if I remember right it uh, hooked in this hole right here and needs to hook in back in the back over here. This is the dangerous part. I'm taking my long pliers. I'm going to push with my thumb and pull. And I'm also using the hub as leverage. It's almost in. I'm going to hit it the rest of the way. And away we go. Actually quite simple. Lastly, let's get our parking brake lever assembly and install it and it hooks in up under here so beware that and then put it on the pin make sure it goes under here it's real important it can't go over the top else it can't do its job you can see it sitting there it's on its pin grab our spring spring hooks down in this hole and then comes back up to hook there and it actually looks like it would be easier to hook it down in the hole I'm going to use my smaller um, dikes this time. Since this spring doesn't have a whole lot of tension on it, I'm just going to grab it, pull it down, push it in. Easy as that. Guess what? It's uh, done with the exception of the brake adjustment. Personally, I'll take a little bit of anti-seize and put it around the hub in this area. And I do this so that uh, the hub doesn't rust to the drum and then it's easy to get on and off. I only use about that much. That's about it. Next you'll need your uh, flathead screwdriver for this one. And you just want to start to get some tension on it. But not a lot because you've got new shoes here. Go ahead and grab your drum and slide it on and spin it. It's uh, way out of adjustment right now, but we do that by removing, set it down, a series of clicks, reinstall it. And we repeat until it starts to feel snug. When you're checking the adjustment, push on the drum on the outsides so that it's flush with the hub. See how it's not flush? You want it flush when you spin it. Now if you go to put it on, it feels too tight, you're probably close. And if that's the case, you want to back the adjustment off, so just pull back on the lever and run the wheel a few turns in the opposite direction. Make sure that stays down. Locked into place. There. Now you've got it close like that, come over to the parking brake and activate it a couple of times. And this will center the shoes up on the backing plate. And once you reach this stage, Go ahead and check to see if it spins nice again. Once you reach this stage, 
only go like two clicks at a time until it gets close. And once you start to feel any kind of resistance, stop. You don't want to go too far with it. All right, I feel good with that. Um, personally, I've, I've been known to over adjust and get them too tight. If you get them too tight, um, they'll overheat and possibly lock the brakes up. This is not good. So better to err on the side of caution and save that last two clicks so that you don't wind up in the same situation. The other side is the same, but opposite. I'm only going to show you one side. That's all I need to show you. And, you know, putting the wheel back on and the rest of that stuff. I think you can handle that part. You got this far. Me, I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com. Or um, you can find me on Facebook and Twitter for that matter. Or you can find me here watching you. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty.